Hi, I'm the History Guy, and if you didn't know, in addition to our channel on YouTube, we also have a page on Patreon, where for just a dollar a month, you can help support the work of the History Guy. And in exchange for that dollar, you get all the content of the YouTube channel, advertising free, and you get one additional video per month that is exclusive for patrons on Patreon. And for the last year and a half, that's been a series on the History Guy's hats. And occasionally, when the History Guy is traveling, we're able to bring to you an older version of one of those episodes to the YouTube audience. Today we're going to talk about another one of those hats that was used so much by one nation that it came to represent that nation, but it also has a great history in other places as well. Enjoy the episode, and if you do enjoy the episode, please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. This is a kind of hat that's called a KP, which literally just means a cap. This particular KP with the straight flat sides and the oval shape is, is representative of a French KP, but KPs come in different shapes and sizes. This particular KP is one from the French Police Nationale, but more on that later. The KP is a fairly generic term, and it means generally a hat with a round top and a small brim, or what the French call a bec de canard, or duck's bill. The KP holds a particular spot in the development of military hats. In brief, after gunpowder made heavy steel helmets obsolete, militaries largely moved to a simple, practical, broad-brimmed hat, essentially the same hat almost universally used by laborers. The hat was good for what hats do, protecting the head from the sun and rain. However, the brim could get in the way of loading and aiming a musket, especially if the unit was doing, say, drill, loading, shouldering, and marching. The brim of the hat could therefore be bent up and tied or stitched. Over time, the crown of the hat changed, might have been larger or smaller, but the general idea was the same. By the 18th century, the hat was being pinned up on three sides, commonly called a cocked hat. Today you might know it as a tricorn, but that name was not actually used at the time. The tricorn could be rather simple, but it also could be quite fancy. The similar bicorn was pinned up on two sides. But around the turn of the 19th century, the cocked hat fell out of favor and was largely replaced by the shako. The shako was developed from a cavalry hat worn by hussars, like cavalry. It was a tall cylindrical hat with a small brim, usually including an ornamental cockade at the front. The shako held its shape better than the cocked hat, and its stiffness added some protection from a saber blow, but its greatest advantage was that it added to the soldier's height. It was a hat for a period when units marched and fired in order and helped to dress ranks that were supposed to be intimidating in their form. While there were a number of types of hats and cavalry helmets used during the French Revolutionary Wars and the Napoleonic Wars, including the similar busby, essentially a shako made out of animal fur, but the shako was the type of hat used by the vast majority of soldiers of the era. It was also used in North America. The shako was the hat worn by the Mexican infantry during the Texas Revolution. It's perhaps best recognized in the United States because shakos were very popular hats used by marching bands, still popular even today. Over time, the shako became larger and more ornamented, and as it did, it became increasingly less practical, being heavy, uncomfortable, and hard to carry. Because it was uncomfortable, many armies adopted a simpler soft cap that would be used for normal duty, say when a soldier wasn't on parade or in combat. Those caps used a number of designs, but were generally called forage caps, tended to follow a general pattern of some sort of soft crown with a visor to protect the eyes from the sun. Another version, called a bonnet de police by the French, was foldable with straight sides, but didn't include a visor. Scottish soldiers wore a similar hat called a Glengarry. Modern versions are still commonly used by militaries, generally called a side cap or an overseas cap. The Russian military uses a version commonly called a palatka, and the U.S. Air Force calls the design a flight cap. At the same time, some armies were experimenting with simpler designs for the shako. While wars on the continent tended to be more formal, and the general idea was that a soldier would fight a battle in their parade dress uniform, formality was less important on the frontiers of colonial nations. One of those nations was France. In the 1830s, France had troops fighting in French Algeria, where the hot climate made shakos impractical. There they developed a duty hat they eventually called the casquette d'Afrique, or Africa cap. The hat had similarities with the shako, but was smaller and lighter. Stiffness was added using lightweight cane. The hat had similarities with both the shako and the bonnet de police and was almost a hybrid of the two. Finally, in 1851, the French evolved the casquette d'Afrique one more time, removing the stiffening altogether and shortening the hat to be more fitted. The hat was officially commonly called the bonnet de police au visor, or police cap with a visor, but it is commonly known as the capi. The evolution could be seen in the American army as well. During the 1845 war with Mexico, the standard uniform hat was a shako, 
but troops preferred the simpler, soft model 1844 inch cap. In 1858, the Army redesigned its hat. The Model 1858 dress hat, commonly called a hardy hat, was essentially a shako with a wide brim. The Model 1844 inch cap had used, a, used in the Mexican War had a rounded top, but the Model 1858 forage cap, also called a bummer cap, was in essence a shako without stiffening. The Army did, however, retain shakos as well, as seen as the Model 1864 light artillery hat and the Model 1872 full dress cap. While it was designed to be practical, the hardy hat was generally unpopular, and the forage cap was the hat most commonly used by the troops. That hat is generally associated with the Civil War, and although it looks very like a KP, a Civil War buff will tell you that it is not. The KP, which was used by both sides in the Civil War and in the Federal Army, was often called a McClelland hat if the brim was flat, and a McDowell hat if the brim was curved. The bummer cap is more shapeless, it's less fitting, the circle at the top is not fixed, which most shows as the cloth rim rises above the circle on the KP, but not on the forage cap. While the KP was often embellished with braids for officers, the emblem was usually worn on the top of a forage cap, but on the front of a KP. The forage cap, or bummer cap, was typically worn by federal troops in the East, but was worn much less commonly by the Confederates, whose hat design was officially the French-designed KP. This particular KP, which was made for reenactment, is made out of rough cloth with a simple leather brim, and it's typical of the type of KP that a common Confederate soldier would have had. While the Civil War is most associated with the KP, in fact, many of the troops were wearing the forage cap. But the difference is really a quibble, though. While there is a distinction in the design between a forage cap and a KP, which shows in the difference between the Model 1858 forage cap, the bummer cap, and the Model 1872 forage cap, which was used during the Indian Wars, in reality, both were soft caps that were used for light duty, and thus a KP is a type of forage hat. And both were soft cylindrical caps with a brim, and thus the Model 1858 would still meet the general description of a KP. The Model 1895 forage cap was more squared, but would still be called a KP. Similar designs, based on the military hat, were used for all kinds of purposes. They were used by police departments, they were used by marching bands, they were used by fire departments, they were used by train conductors and streetcar conductors. This one's a civilian hat that was used by a Masonic organization. This one represents the United States Lighthouse Establishment. The Ridgeway cap, used during the Cold War, is also fairly described as a KP, as are some modern patrol caps. The KP was used all over the world, for example, being the most common hat used on both sides during the 1864 to 1870 Paraguayan War and by Chilean troops in the 1879 to 1884 War in the Pacific. When the French army went to war with Prussia in 1870, they were still issuing shakos, but they were uncomfortable and most troops simply threw them away, instead choosing to wear the KP. The French army was still using the 1886 model at the outbreak of the Great War in 1914. While the KP was replaced with the Adrian helmet, officers continued to wear it behind the lines, generally using the stiffer and more ornamented version, continuing its use through the Second World War, where it is iconically linked to General Charles de Gaulle. The KP was still around in other places as well, for example as part of the uniform of Hitler's SA. Perhaps its most famous use is with the French Foreign Legion, which originally wore a blue KP with a red top, but later switched to the iconic white. The KP has now returned to service as part of the French Army dress uniform. Which brings us back to this particular hat. In 1818, the French formed an organization called Surete, or Security. It was a group of plainclothes undercover detectives that was said to inspire both the formation of Scotland Yard and the FBI. By 1962, Surete had become a general policing force, and they combined with the French Metropolitan Police to form uh, Surete Nationale, or National Security, and in 1966 they were reformed for the final time to become the Police Nationale, or the National Police, and their 1966 uniform included the blue KP with the silver piping and the badge of the French National Police. And this hat became almost as emblematic of a French police officer as a custodian helmet is of a British police officer. But in 1982, the French National Police stopped using the KP because while this design is smart and distinctive, it simply sits too tall for officers who are sitting in an automobile. And so, this hat has become just another piece of history. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The History Guy, short snippets of forgotten history between 10 and 15 minutes long. And if you did enjoy, please go ahead and click that thumbs up button. 
If you have any questions or comments or suggestions for future episodes, please write those in the comment section. I will be happy to personally respond. Be sure to follow The History Guy on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and check out our merchandise on teespring.com. And if you'd like more episodes on Forgotten History, all you need to do is subscribe. <laughs>